Today we're driving the 2024 Alpina XB7. If you've always wanted an X7M, but BMW only makes an X7 M60i, this is about as close as it's going to get. 4.4 liter twin turbo V8 making 631 horsepower, 590 pound-feet of torque, eight-speed auto, 48 volt mild hybrid system, 23 inch Alpina wheels, massive brakes. This thing is, it's insane. The performance here is nuts. I've spent all week with this Alpina XB7. Let's walk around it. Let's talk about what it's been like to live with. And of course, we'll take it for a drive. The thing I like about Alpina's products over M products is that they're a little bit more luxurious, a little bit more comfortable than their M equivalents. And this XB7 kind of stands on its own a little bit. We have really nice plush leather in here, beautiful stitching, interior work. This open pour wood is absolutely stunning. And the price tag would warrant all of these extra refinements. Starting price on this is $145,000. That V8 starts up silently and seamlessly with a 48 volt mild hybrid system. That sounds fantastic. Of course, we have all of the updates that the X7 has seen here. I drive eight, the 48 volt mild hybrid system, air suspension, rear axle steering, the new interior for the X7, or at least some of the updates and refreshes. It's all very impressive, very, very luxurious and high tech. Alpina logo on the wheel, the classic paddle or shifter buttons behind the wheel. No paddle shifter, it's just little buttons. And of course, Alpina text in the dashboard, infotainment down here. This is silver ash root open pour wood. Look at the transition from dark to light here. It is just stunning. Exterior on this XB7 is painted in Manhattan green metallic. A beautiful color, especially in the sunlight. Look at that. Actually, really like the way this looks. It's so menacing, especially with the extra aerodynamic enhancements here. Alpina gives us some better improved cooling. Also for this engine, we're on a set of Pirelli P0 tires. 325 30R23s in the rear, 285 35R23s in the front. Look at these brakes. Putting 23 inch wheels on this XB7 is one way to make this massive Brembo brake package look small, but don't be fooled. It's, uh, it's very, very capable. Let's pop the hood. Alpina, of course, does all of their development, tuning, and enhancements to make this much more powerful package than the X7M60i with a warranty. And also, even though this makes 631 horsepower, it's surprisingly efficient. 16 MPG in the city, 20 on the highway. All right, let's start in the back here. Here's our key fob. Split tailgate. Of course, on the air suspension, you can lower the suspension so that you get better access. Back here, easy, nice. You can control two rows of seats with these buttons, fold everything down if you want, or hop back here and put the whole family in your XB7. One button press closes the split tailgate, quad exhaust tips. <laughs> this is lowered all the way down on that air suspension. Top speed here is 180 miles per hour. Front seat moves forward to allow room for the second row captain's chair to let you in the third row.
lots of ambient lighting. A little bit of room underneath that second row chair to put my feet. Stretch out between the two. This is all very nice back here, actually. I even have third row temperature controls. Pillows on the headrests. Amazing interior quality, even back here. Fold down your armrests, adjust their height. All the good stuff that you would expect out of your $150,000 Super SUV. It does take a minute to extract yourself out of the third row, but if you've got money, you've got time. Little place to put a mobile device or tablet right there. Watch movies, more ambient lighting, more rear seat temperature controls. Two water bottle or cup holders down here, along with two USB C ports. I mean, just, oh, there's even a, there's even a moonroof for the third row. Cool. Shade controls back here too. Oh yeah, there's that third row. Nice. Window shades. Awesome. Bowers and Wilkins sound system. All right, let's hop in. We'll show you around the front seat briefly and we'll see if this drives as menacingly and as aggressively as it looks. That's a solid door close. Two seat memory settings, tons of seat controls. You can even adjust the rear seats from the front. Auto up down windows, all four corners. A little bit of storage down there. Love all the finishing in here from the crystal shifter to the Alpina logos. The the green and blue stitching that has been iconic with the brand for years. More detailing here in the iDrive controller. It's all very nice and very expensive. We're gonna start off in Sport Individual, which has our powertrain in Sport Plus and everything else in comfort. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, even on these 23 inch wheels, this car is very, very comfortable. Suspension is super soft in comfort mode, really nice body control. And the X7 is just a fantastic platform to start. There is a lot of power here but very, very comfortable too. This doesn't beat you up. It's not overly stiff in comfort mode. The suspension just floats over everything, even on these 23 inch wheels. We'll wait until we get some heat in these Pirellis today. It's still chilly out. effortless acceleration from this. This is one of those vehicles, you're up a little bit higher, you don't really realize how fast you're going until you look down at that speedo. We have assisted driving. It'll basically just do its thing on the highway. It's pretty keen to make very fast changes with its speed limit. So when you change the speed limit, it'll either accelerate pretty quickly or slow down quickly, depending on what you set your speed to. It'll lane change for you. You can change your cruise control modes very quickly here with this button between distance control and assisted driving. It's all very nice, as it is in the regular X7. Let's go into regular Sport Plus mode put our transmission into sport as well. Some 
subtle burbles from the exhaust there. The four wheel steer makes this feel really nimble. Hides a lot of that weight. This weighs almost 6,000 pounds and it handles like it weighs 4,500 or 5,000 pounds. Good amount of steering feel too. I mean, the harder you turn, the harder it turns. It's just, it's amazing. <laughs> we have an electronically controlled rear limited slip differential. That helps put some of that power down. This eight speed is perfection. So well tuned, so responsive. Very smooth, very seamless. Nice close ratios too. Very quiet here on the highway too. Even in Sport Plus mode, the suspension, I could live with this on a daily basis. If anything, in comfort, it's a bit floaty. Definitely not what you'd get from an M car. Even an X5M is very stiff. I like the engine noise here, too. It sounds natural. It's convincing. It sounds like a V8. They've done away with some of the piped-in engine noise here. Actually sounds pretty good. Brakes are phenomenal. A little bit of body roll, but it just lets you know what you're driving. Holding a gear there wonderfully out of that corner, even at full throttle. Utilizing all the torque here. And then you put it back into comfort mode. And it just turns off at a stoplight. <laughs> because of that 48 volt mild hybrid system. Probably cooling off a little bit after that run, but still. Really impressive. Air suspension is always kind of going to work for you too. Above 150 miles an hour, it'll lower for better aerodynamics. You can raise it up for different height settings. I think you can go up over two inches higher than standard ride height for a little bit of off-road capability or for better ground clearance. And of course, you can slam it down to the ground like we saw in our walk around video. You really have to appreciate some of the tuning that goes into this XB7. From the steering, the weight of all the controls, the calibration of the engine and the transmission, it's all so harmonious and really, really well developed. drive 8 still a little bit tedious to use still overly distracting in my opinion but you do get used to it once you get your initial settings set up it does the job I wish you were able to control your following distance without having to go through a few different menus I drive 8.5 I spent some time with that a couple weeks ago at BMW's test fest and that is a significant improvement in some respects, especially with climate control. This climate menu gets a little bit excessive. 
there isn't even room for all the settings here in one screen. But you will be able to update to 8.5 here with most BMW products after 2023, which is nice. Super comfortable on the highway. I mean, as you'd expect, it follows that Alpina philosophy of insane speed, really refined road manners, and incredible comfort, interior quality, materials, and luxury. Just an SUV form. This can even tow 7,500 pounds. It's, it does it all. Maybe it doesn't feel as missile-like as the B7 that we've driven. That has over a 200 mile hour top speed. But it's still pretty dang impressive. And like I said, if you've always wanted an X7M, this is about as close as you're going to get. But probably, honestly, a little bit better because it's comfortable. I spent some time in an X5M the other day, and it's not bad as far as comfort goes, but it's still a hardcore machine. It's loud, it's stiff. You know that you're in a Performance M product, whereas in this, it can do both. It can handle, it has the straight line power and speed, but it's just so, so nice and so luxurious. We did drive an Alpina XB7 a couple years ago back in, I believe it was 2021, and I wasn't blown away. The extra refinements, the 48 volt mild hybrid system here, definitely is a big improvement in terms of smoothness, power delivery, but I'm actually most impressed about the suspension and feedback that I'm getting from the steering. It just feels better, it feels better tuned and it feels like it handles a lot better too. That four wheel steer is really impressive and does a lot to bring this around a corner. I mean, look at that. Traction control still kicking in there a little bit. If I had one complaint, DSC is a bit too invasive. It can't really handle the power from this thing. Let's turn it off, see where that puts us. Absolutely amazing. I feel like sometimes this handles better than the X3M. It's a lot of little subtle changes and subtle improvements over the X7M60i, but boy, do they really add up. The shift speed from this 8-speed auto is just 
bonkers and it's so smooth there's no harshness except for on launch control even in sport plus mode you don't feel the gear changes downshifts it's all just seamless I'm really getting to like these paddle buttons it's just a unique feel it's something completely different no other manufacturer does it, except for Alpina. They have a nice resistance. And the steering ratio is so fast, you don't really need to look for them a lot. You drive something like this, and then you look at the new BMW XM, which has similar, if not slightly better, performance figures. And this starts to look like a bit of a bargain because XMs are approaching $200,000. And I don't think they drive as well as this. They're boomy, they're stiff. Yes, they make a little bit more power, but how much power do you really need on the street? This is an Autobahn burner. And in the States, we can't use a fraction of this power. Alpina XB7. I think it's a little bit underappreciated, a little bit under the radar. You want something different and something that looks awesome. Might be worth a look if you've got a $150,000 hole burning in your pocket. Or if you're watching this seven years from now, might be a fun purchase then too. steer is a freaky thing in an SUV like this. Okay, XB7, one of the best performance SUVs I have ever driven. Well done BMW and well done Alpina improving upon BMW's handiwork. I do wish the steering wheel came down a little bit lower. I'm lowered quite a bit in the seat for that sportier feel, that sportier driving position that I like. I don't like to be too high up in an SUV like this. The steering wheel just feels like it goes a little bit too high. It's kind of my only ergonomic complaint here. Grasping at straws. This thing's fantastic. So direct, so responsive. And it plays this neat trick of just feeling so light. It's kind of strange. Part of that, I think, is the control weights. Steering is light. Power is so effortless. There's so much torque here and responsiveness that it really does kind of hide its size and the four-wheel steer does a lot too but we have active sway bars air suspension is really really well tuned very comfortable very soft i would probably swing for the 21 inch wheels just to get a little bit of extra sidewall you do hit some big potholes in this here in michigan and these 23s just they do transmit a bit more noise and nvh into the cabin but they look so awesome that Ah, it might be worth it with a wheel and tire package. <laughs> I also like that BMW still gives us a shifter down here that we can change gears without having to use paddles or buttons. It's useful.
All right, guys, I think that's going to wrap up the video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Check out the description for some more details, specs, info, etc. This has been a pleasure. This is an SUV that I honestly only got a couple days behind the wheel of, and I wish I was able to get some more time. I was busy out reviewing the new Toyota Tacoma this week, doing some stuff with this uh, Can-Am side-by-side we have, and uh, filming the Tundra that Toyota lent us, but I didn't get nearly enough time in this XB7 kind of jealous substitute Topher did go check out his videos on winding road and Topher drives but oh man what an amazing thing super fast steering here too look at this turning circle it's just rotating on a dime here <laughs> I believe it's either 2.3 or 2.6 degrees of rear wheel steer it makes a big difference We'll slam this on the bump stops and park it. Do one more walk around. And then maybe we'll do a uh, bit of a Bowers and Wilkins sound system test. Fully lowered. This looks just like a big wagon. It's actually pretty easy to get into.